Hello everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today I thought we'd have a make for the boys because as you probably know I do like making the girls clothes for Luna um, but Alfie, who is Luna's brother, who's here, is ready for some new clothes. So I don't know whether those people who are new to Luna Lapin might not realise but Alfie is exactly the same as um, Luna um, you can obviously choose different colour for the um, pads if you want to. And if you have a quick look in the book, if you look at the fabric on the inside of Alfie's ears here, you, and then if you have a look on the front cover and the inside of the ears on Luna, you'll see it's exactly the same rabbit. So you don't need any new skills for, for making Alfie at all. Just just make up your Luna, just choose your fabrics as much as you, uh, um, however you want to, and then we can then choose the clothes that are... Um, more aimed at boys although i think that actually a lot of these apply to girls as well so it just depends on what you prefer your rabbit to be dressed in however get to the point claire um what we're going to do today is we're going to make some um boxer shorts for alfie now i haven't actually seen these in the in in any of the makes but i just thought it'd be a really cool make for him we make the french knickers for um luna of course um and so i just thought yeah why, why not just put a bit of a twist on this so it's a bit of a new one for me because i've not made them before i know how to make the french knickers and, and the trousers and what have you but i thought actually let's make some boxes for for alfie as well and if you wanted to they would all also serve as um shorts for going with his shirt if you made those in a pajama fabric um then that would actually work with those as well so um let me go and get some fabrics and we'll have a look and see what we can make today okay so the plans have worked this is what you're going to be making it's a little pair of boxer shorts like this complete with a little mock fly on the front and the button to close and we've left a little gap in the back there if you've got a little tail you want to stick out there is plenty of room so if you don't want to do that but you don't have to but i did so there we go there's alfie in his boxer shorts so let's get on and show you how to make them so I've just looked at the pattern for the French knickers and I've used that pattern just here on the book. It's page 126 in book one. And I have traced my pattern off and that will then just give them, has just given us the, the base pattern to use. Um, you cut two of these, these actually come together and form um, each of the legs. So you've got one and then you've got your other leg. So we need to cut two mirror copies of these. Now, I've had a look at in my stash and I've got this um, blue fabric here, which I think looks really great. It's actually, I don't know if you can tell or not, it's actually an old sleeve from a shirt of my husband's. And I have got a video on how to salvage fabric from old shirts before they go to the charity shop. And so I thought that we'd, we'd, we'd um, use that, which would be really quite good fun. So that's what I'm going to do. So. The first thing I want to do, especially when you're working with a stripe, is to make sure that whatever stripe you choose, you have that absolutely on the edge of your fabric because we want these two, the stripes on our boxer shorts, to be nice and straight. So we just use one of those stripes as a guide and we just fold our fabric down in half. It probably needs a quick iron, so let me just go across to the iron and just iron this. So I've just iron this fabric nice and flat. It is double. So we've got that to fold in half, so that'll make sure that we get our two mirrored copies. Now I've spoken about mirrored copies before, and if your fabric's got a right side and a wrong side, you need to make sure that if you're cutting out your fabric on the single, like this, you cut one this way, and then you flip your pattern over and you cut one that way. The reason for this is the difference in these two curves, just here, look, because one is um, slightly deeper for the, um, for the back of the, um, I'll get all my words wrong today, sorry. Um, for the back of the boxer shorts, uh, in this case, French knickers pattern, but it's, it's the same thing. And then this is a much thinner curve. And if you cut two, like one like that, and one like that, then you won't be able to turn one over in order to give you the right orientation. I know that can be a bit confusing, but please just, just take my word for it. Or try it with something and just get some scrap fabric and put an X on one side, and then you'll see what I mean. So. If you're cutting singular, you need to have one this way and one this side. If you're cutting on the double, which is what I was thinking I was doing, although I might change my mind, but bear with me, is then we can put the pattern piece onto, onto the um, fabric 
and we will automatically, as long as we've got a fold in our fabric, we will automatically get one of one orientation and one of the other, the two mirror copies that we need. The only other thing that I was just looking at then is that, and I, I heard this somewhere, I think it was on the Cashmerette site, and she was saying that actually it can be more um, economical with your fabric if you actually cut things out on the single rather than on the double. And I was thinking, really? But if you think about it, if we cut this out this way, you've got this lovely nice piece of fabric here. And if we cut it out this way, we're going to make that a much smaller piece and we've got quite a lot of, of spare, spare there. Whereas if I turn this over, a little bit more work, and I put one up there, and get that nice and level, and then perhaps flick one over here, I'm going to use a lot more, lot more of the fabric and waste a lot less. So I think that's actually what I'm going to do. So I can't flip it upside down because if we look, this has got an asymmetrical stripe. So just, just be aware of that. But we can certainly do one this way and then flip it over and do one the other way and not waste quite so much fabric. So let's get on with doing that, shall we? Get my pins. The other thing that I would suggest you do is fold your pattern piece in half along the hem and put a nice fold in it because that will give us a nice grain line to follow. We can even draw over it and put a pen. We can even draw over that and that will give us a nice line. If our pencil works. Just put grain on there to remind me. And that gives us a nice line that we can then line up with a stripe and we'll make sure that those are absolutely straight. So that's what we're gonna do. Because if you look, the, the, the waist on this pattern goes slightly up at the back and down at the front. So we can't use one of those, the top line to be straight. So we need to use this um, grain line. So let's pop that on a stripe there and then pin this before it can move. it all down on all the sides. We usually try and pin in the seam allowance so that we've not got too much going. We're not, if we're going to make any holes in our fabric with our pins, it happens in the seam allowance and not in our precious fabric. But that's a tip that will carry you forward into dressmaking as well. That's where that tip's from. Because one day, you never know, if you're making these clothes for Luna and for Alfie, then there's nothing to stop you from having to go at making clothes for either children or for yourself at some stage. So I'm just going to cut this one out and then I'm going to reverse the pattern over and then do one on the other side. So just before we take the pattern off this piece, we've got a little one little notch on the front here and we've got two notches on the back here. So what I'm going to do is just mark those onto this pattern piece just by taking just a couple of millimetre snip into the seam at right angles to the pattern piece. And that when we're, when we're looking at the pattern afterwards and we spread the fabric, we'll be able to see those two little snips and we'll know that they're right. The other thing that I'm going to do is be, before I take this pattern off the first one is that because the fabrics are very similar front and back for this fabric and it is quite similar for shirting, so that I don't get mixed up, I'm going to use the top of my fabric as the right side. So I'm just going to put a pin in the middle of the top side and then I'll do the same on the other one and I'll know exactly that that's the right side that I need to be working with. So I'll just get on and cut out the second piece and then I'll join you back here. Just about to cut out my second piece and just remember I've got to flip this pattern over. So that's the front side of my pattern which was cut for that one. I'm now going to flick my pattern over like that just easy quickly and then line it up again on my fabric and I can see the fold line which is my crease line and I'm going to place that directly onto one of the stripes. I'm going to move it up as far as I can to save as much fabric as possible because fabric is precious. It costs a lot of money, doesn't it, to earn it and to keep it. And then whilst I'm holding that down, I'm just going to put a pin in at the top and the bottom just to hold that nice and still and straight for me. I'm just then going to carry on pinning this um, pattern piece of the fabric and then we'll come back and we will look at 
how we're doing it now. I'll just explain that mirror in a bit more because on this pattern it's quite nice and easy to see. So I'll just explain that mirror in a little bit more. Or if you've understood about mirroring and you you don't it doesn't so it has clicked and it doesn't it makes sense to you, then you can just fast forward on. I've put timestamps in the video description for you so you can have a look at there and move forward it should you so wish. It's a new skill I've learned. Thank you to one of my subscribers who pointed out to me that that was possible. I've worked out how to do it, so thank you for that. Okay, let me cut out this one and I'll come back to you. So we've got the two pattern pieces cut out here and I've got both pieces marked with a pin. Now, what you might notice is that my first piece is cut out this way because of the deep V. But if I put that back onto this one, can you see how the pattern piece is different? And that's the difference in the shaping. So if I'd have cut out two this way, that wouldn't have worked. But because I've cut out one this way and turned it over to cut out this one, when we sew these together, we've got the two notches there and the two notches there are going to match up together to make these two pieces. Whereas if we'd have had one this way, which would have then given us a perfect one-on-one -on -one copy, when you try to match these edges up, I've only got one notch there and I've got two notches there, so I would know that that was the wrong way round for that piece. It is a confusing um, principle. Skip over it if it doesn't make sense, but just always cut your, your pattern pieces out on, on the double. So then to make these um, boxes, it's really quite simple. Um, first of all, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a little hem on the edge of these trousers and I'm just going to fold up literally a quarter of an inch and press and another quarter of an inch and press. I'm not going to stitch that down just yet because I think the legs of these will be um, wide enough for me to be able to sew this on the sewing machine but it really does help you to sew to press these whilst they're in the flat before you've joined them together so let's go to the ironing, ironing board and we'll just do that on both legs the other thing that we'll do as well is we'll do the same on the top so we'll get all our ironing done in one place so I'm going to turn over a quarter of an inch but then I'm going to turn over one centimeter is that one centimeter let me just double check yeah, just over one centimetre, just take a little bit smaller. You only need a centimetre just to thread some elastic through just for holding those onto Alfie's waist. So we're going to go to the sewing machine and we'll do those ironing. We'll do those ironing, we'll do that pressing. So we're just going to iron over just a small amount on here. Just watch out for the steam because the steam can be quite um, strong on, a, on an iron and then you're going to burn your fingers. Just that little, that little bit's just gone crazy at the front. Got caught under the eye. Let's just press that flat. Okay. And then we're just going to just we're just following the um, curve of the waistband anyway. And then we're just going to turn that over by a centimetre. You can measure it if you like, but it, you're not going. It's nobody's going to mark it other than you. So just keep an eye on that. And then on the bottom of the hem here, we're just going to turn up a small hem there. shirt in fabric just give it a blow if it's too hot to handle because that does just cool it down for you a little bit and then another little hem just there so that's all we need to do so we've got just got that double fold hem there so we've got no raw edges on the inside of the boxer shorts that just needs to be a little bit neater there but that's fine and then again on the bottom here so I'm just going to finish this one off now we'll turn the top over so let's just do the bottom on this one we're going to have the best dress Luna and Alfie's aren't we in the whole of the world right so that's one turn and then I'm just turning it over exactly the same amount again and that will just give us our little neatened hem on the bottom there okay so let's go back to the sewing machine so now we've got our two pieces all ironed together and I've taken the pins out because now we've ironed them we know which is the right and which is the wrong side. The first thing we're going to do is just unroll the bottom hem for a second that's why we've not stitched it already and then we're just going to put those two pieces of the jutting out pieces if you like on the pattern together with the right sides together. Get those to line up nicely 
You can put a pin in if you want to, just to hold them. It's only a very short seam. And then what we're going to do now is just sew this at quarter of an inch seam allowance. So we're just on a construction stitch, so it's just 2.2 stitch length. I'm just going to start off first. A couple of stitches and reverse. Oh, mine's wanted to fold over. It's only a small seam, isn't it? And to the end, we're just going to reverse as well and then just take that back again. So just hold on one second. And there's our seam So It's just turned over the top just because it's a small seam. And then because this is a, a raw edge, we're going to just do a little zigzag along there. So we're just going to change our stitch. Mine's number eight, but it's just a zigzag stitch. And then last time when we were zigzagging, we took the stitch width down to... 3.5 and we had the stitch length down to 1.5 and that worked really nicely so I'm just going to go over the edge of these now. It does mean that we have to push this seam to one side but it does mean that the when we it does mean that we have to push this seam to one side when we're hemming but it just means that if we take off these little whiskers here from the excess um lots of them today isn't there sorry from the excess fabric here, then that's just going to keep that nice and neat and it's not going to fray in the future. So we're going to do the same again here. Just put these with the, um, unfold the seam allowance on the bottom, the hem. We've only just pressed that because that'll keep its memory for us when we want to go back and do some more. Put the two ends together near the curves and then we're just going to sew down there. So take it back off the them both together shouldn't I if you do both of yours together it'll be a more economical use of your time rather than to keep changing your stitch around it's good practice though okay so lining this up I'm just going to do a quarter of an inch seam now just want to flick up doesn't it and then after I've trimmed my threads I don't know where I put my snips they got lost again I think and now we're just going to zigzag along this same edge just to prevent any fraying. The cotton fabric does fray, but it is lovely to work with. It really keeps a press nice, press line nicely. And just take those whiskers off, as you can see. And then your zigzagging should prevent any more from coming on that seam. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're just going to zigzag along this curved line here. So this is where the, the leg is. And then we're just going to do this zigzag this curved seam just here. So let's do that. Because I want to neaten that before we then sew it together. The other one that we might need to do is just put a little pin just in from where the, so it's not going to interfere with the line, but just where the notches are, because we need to remember where those notches are for meeting those up together. So, because we're zigzagging, it's going to lose it, isn't it? Put your needle down in your work. Oops. Just manoeuvre your fabric so that it's flat inside. And just be careful you don't stretch this edge just here because it's because it's on a curve, it's on what we call a bias edge. So that edge will stretch if you're not careful. So just be really gentle as you're going around that corner. Don't start tugging your fabric around. so that it'll interfere with the actual stitching of the sewing machine. Oops, trim our threads. If we trim those as we go along, we don't have a big job to do as at the end. So we've just zigzagged along this edge. We've got a few whiskers, so we just take those off. And just here a few whiskers. Just trying to trim the th loose threads off without going through the stitch zigzag stitching. There we go. We've just got our pins in to mark where our 
notches are. So let me just mark this one up as well. Just stay back in this out of the way of the sewing machine and you can go quite close then but without fear of running over the pins. And one on the front we should have here, yep, yeah, just there. If you've got a Frixion pen as well, you can put a dot or something or make a mark, but you've just got to be careful that the Frixion pen will actually iron out of your, it's a heat erasable pen, and that it will iron out of your fabric. Remember to put your needle down in your work when you stop so that it doesn't start shifting for you underneath there. If you've got an overlocker, of course, you can overlock these seams if you want to. Depends if you have one of those or if not, then I thought it would be good just to demonstrate if you've got just got a sewing machine that you can still neaten your edges really nicely. With that, okay. So here we've got two inside out trouser legs and if we lay those together we can see we've got two pins at the back there and two pins at the back there. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn one leg inside out. So let's turn this one inside out. Oh, it's actually going the right way around, isn't it? And we're going to just bear in mind that that seam there needs to push towards the back. So um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to then put the one that we've just turned the right way around inside the one that is still inside out just to make a little sandwich and then we're going to match up the top of our waistband and we're going to pin on the inside because that's the way we're going to sew it we're then going to use our pins on the on the front here to make sure that they match up and we can take them, those pins out now because we've got I've got them pinched with my fingers oops need to pin from the inside Claire then going to make sure that between the legs matches so we match up those sewn seams under the legs and both seam allowances want to point towards the back if we can pin in there and then we're going to open up the top waistband here again and pin just there again from the inside and that just gives us our starting point because we want the the, the, the top of the waistband at the front and at the back to match and then we want between the legs where this where the trouser legs are to match as well so those are our match points so again here I'm going to take the pins out from inside and put one pin where that one is because I want a little gap for um, my character's tail to poke through and another pin where the other one was which is about here just so that that tail can poke through and fish we're going to take these pins out now And so I'm just going to do a narrow seam now down to here, down to this first pin here. And I'm going to um, start and stop here, just reverse for a couple of stitches. Then leave a gap and then I'm going to do another couple of reverse stitches just down here before then I carry on around. Now you just need to do a narrow um, seam here because we've already taken up some of the seam with the zigzagging. But it was much easier to zigzag before we actually sew these together. So that's why I've done it that way. But um, we just need to bear in mind that we've we've not got too much room. So don't go too close to the stitches, but just go through and along. So we're going to put our work under here. We're going to take a couple of stitches. Hold on to our threads. A couple of Oh, no, we're still on a zigzag stitch. Hold on one second. Let's take that out. So I don't want that to be in my way. Let's use my quick and pick. There we go. Easy done. Right, okay. We are on a straight stitch again. Holding on to our threads. A couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back. And then we sew towards the first pin, just with a narrow seam. Put a needle down into our work before we start taking the pins out so we don't just pull the fabric out from under the needle. And then we're just going to carry on down here. And get to about where this needle is. We're going to take the pin out, is we're going to take that one out. 
and just reverse. Let's leave it up, let's take that out. It's just a little seam that one is just at the back there, but that's just going to leave room for Bunny's tail or whichever character you're making these for's tail. And then we're just going to move our, ourselves along to the next pin and we're just going to start on that next pin because that marks where that other notch was. So take that pin out. Hold onto my threads, a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches back and needle down into my work so that I always hold that fabric still so it can't shift for me. I'm just going to man manipulate the fabric under so we want, we want the two raw edges to be together and if we need to we can lift our presser foot up and just manipulate the fabric so that we're happy with it under the press because we're working on a curve so it is sometimes a little tricky. We just don't want any puckers in our work so then i'm going to take a few stitches forward just nice and steady and just move this fabric around as we're going and if we need to just lift that presser foot up just to release it and just let it lie nice and flat so that's straight forward for this one pin out Just manipulate my fabric slightly by lifting up the, the presser foot and just manoeuvre that fabric to where I want it to be. Nice and steady around the curve. It's not a race. Take it, if we do, take us at time and do it steady, then generally speaking, we don't have to unpick it at the end. A much nicer result. off our threads Oops. and started to get something that resembles some boxer shorts let's just turn these around the right way around and there we go we have boxer shorts a little hole for a bunny's tail to poke through or another animal and then we've got a nice front to these and we've got the two legs so the next thing I'm going to do is just going to neaten off the this hem here Am I doing the hem? Yeah, no, let's let's just do the tidy and I'll put the back here first. <laughs> so where we've got the hole on the back seam here, I just want you to just to push those two seam allowances separate because what I tend to do is just do a few little stitches just to reinforce that hole and just to keep those edges apart just to make it nice and neat. So I'm gonna work from the inside don't need any, I don't think you need any um, pins for this because it's quite fiddly. And you're just going to push those two seam allowances apart. Hopefully you can see that. And then I'm just going to do a few stitches just down here. Go, leave my needle in the work, pivot and go across here, back up here and across there. And it'll just hold those seam allowances and stop them from when they're being worn from going through to the front. Just a little, just a little nice it is like that, isn't it? That just make things really good so let's check where that opening of that hole is so it's about there so just be aware of where you're lining your needle up a couple of stitches forward a couple back that just anchors those threads i'm just going to work down until i see so the end of that blue stripe there and then more stitch and then i'm just going to do a couple of stitches across it does help reinforce the stitching at that point as well if you've got a child who's perhaps a little bit rougher with their toys than than not it'll just help hold that down and just stop that seam from splitting too make sure we're on it that need a couple more stitches first that's better and then across here If you've not got a character with a tail, then you would just carry straight on down that seam. So that's what we've done. We've just neatened that edge off there, just so that that is not a little hole for his tail is quite nice and neat. Next thing I'm going to do is refold these now, so you can see where the fold lines are. So I'm just going to refold those hems. And you can put a pin in if you wish. Quite narrow, so it's not that easy to work with. Make sure your seam allowance is going the way you want it to. Fold it over once, fold it over again. 
And then as you pull it, that generally will, will make everything behave. And I'm going to sew this from the inside because it's such a narrow hem. I want to be able to, so I need to pin it from the inside. Um, I want to be able to see it. So I'm going to pin from the inside and then sew from the inside as well. And that'll make, make sure that we catch that hem. Got to try and keep it nice and straight though. I still want a nice result. There. And fold it over. And having pre pre ironed these seams does make it much easier for you when you're just wanting to do this section now. It kind of behaves itself. So I just do one leg at a time, otherwise the pins will get in the way of the other one. And we're always going to start at this seam here underneath the legs there. So start and stop there because that's the best place to hide where we're going to reverse stitch. And I've put all my pins in the wrong way around. Look, I want to have those in the direction that I'm going to be sewing. Just turn those round. Just always think about which way you're going to be. Well, obviously I didn't this time, but um, generally speaking, you're trying to remember which way you're going to be stitching. You want to be stitching towards the points of your pins because they're much easier to get hold of the head and pull it out than it is if you're trying to get hold of a head as it's gone underneath your presser foot as I've learned from many years of practice so that's it we've got all our pins now in the direction that we want to travel and so make sure on that seam allowance it stays under okay get that out of the way a bit otherwise it's going to get in the way okay so we're going to start here at the under, in the middle of the leg. It's a little bit fiddly, so just be careful. Um, and I'm going to move my my needle across to the left hand side because that'll make it easier to handle the fabric. So I've just moved my needle right across the end here, so that when I put my I'm going to take that pin out, it's going to be in the way. So that when I put my presser foot down, I can be right on the edge there and I can see that this is my presser foot's holding that hem down nice and still. So a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back, a little bit heavy on that um, seam. And then what we're going to do is just keep rolling your trousers, the, the boxer shorts, forward to you as you start to go. So just keep going along here, nice and neat, just needling your work obviously so that it holds it all down and then just roll the trousers forward to you like that and if you put a little bit of pressure on the, the, the hem generally it lies quite nice and flat for you or it has done for me in the past so the needle holds it still for you while you just move the trouser leg towards you just roll it towards you and take your pin out and if you've got your fingers around then they that will just generally hold your hem flat for you Roll it round and take that pin out. Just stop again. I'm just going to roll it round again and then we're coming up to where we started. So just going to reverse stitch here. Oh, just want to move very much. Careful if you're pulling it, because sometimes you can pull your pull your needle out of shape, and then it'll hit the metal plates and break your needle. Take off the starting stitches and the threads. Did mean starting thread, and there we've got a nice little hem on the bottom of, of the boxes. So let's go ahead and do that on the same thing on the other one, and this time I'll try and get my pins in the right direction. So we're going to be travelling, sewing it from this side. So let's just fold that seam allowance over and over again, just on those pressed lines. Put a pin in just to hold it. And then again, under and under again. Just fold so much easier. I think if you've not pressed it, these little seams like this do tend to try and flick out at you when, they're, when you're sewing them. So it just takes some of the springiness out of it, I think. Try and match the same width as you had on your other hem two equal. Don't want one leg longer than the other. And just keep folding that under. One more I think 
should do this. Just fold it under and under. As I say, they are a little bit fiddly. The other thing that you could do is if you wanted to, you could zigzag the edge and just turn it at once. If you, you know, if your fingers aren't cooperating with you to do this, just make it easy for yourself. I mean, obviously, I've been able to turn it under twice and this is a, a fabric that really behaves itself, this cotton. But as I say, if you just turn it under and then under again, that, that will work. Or if you wanted to zigzag the edge and then just turn it up once, you could also do that if you wanted to. So just do what works for you. So then again, now we're going to just fold this other the, the leg that we finished out of the way and just put the one we're working on down onto the sewing machine bed. Just line it up, write it on that under between the leg seam. Straighten our fabric out, hold on to our edges, our threads. A couple of stitches. And now my machine's trying to get stuck. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift up the presser foot and just advance the work just by a couple of millimetres. I'm going to needle my work again and just see if that works. If it doesn't, take a couple of stitches there and just do it again, just by a millimetre or two, just until you get off that hump. It's just because that seam allowance there is thick and it's just raising it so the feed dogs can't move it properly. So off we go again, needling the work. So before we take the pins out, and then we're just going to roll the trousers for us a little way. Just to, just you just need about an inch or so in front of the presser foot. Let's roll it forward again. And roll it forward again. Started. Oops, just make sure it's all nice and straight. If it's not, you could always use the edge of a quick unpick to just fold, just run along that hem and it, it just does tidy everything un underneath if you need it to. You'd have to be careful not to nudge yourself and, and cut your fabric. So again here it's all nice lying nice and flat. So we know that it's going to get stuck on that hump again of the seam. So I'm just going to do my double stitching just before that. Just there. And then let it just run over the top. Needle up. And by starting and stopping somewhere inconspicuous, like between the legs on here on the on the trouser legs, we hide that, that little bit where we've got the overlap of the stitches and it just leaves the... Hold on another thread here. It just leaves the whole of the legs then just to be a nice little neat hem round. So there we've got our nice little neat hem round. The other thing that I want to do is, so that's the back where the tail is. On the front here, I just want to do some mock stitching. So I want to make like, I mean, obviously this is optional. So I've got a little pen here with a little bit of pink chalk in it. So I want to do like a mock fly. So, what side do mock flies go to? See, this is the thing. I, I've never had to ask myself this question before. What side do flies go to? Does it matter? Possibly. Leave me a note in the comments if you think I've chosen the right way, but I'm going to go that way. Um, but maybe that's the girl's way. Oh, you see? Hold on one second. Let me have a little look. Do a little bit of research and I'll come back to you. So my research is over and it's actually on this side. So <laughs> I'm glad I did that. <laughs> so we know that we have a line coming down here on, tra on trousers that comes straight down. And we know we have a curve down just before it kind of divides off to the legs. So I'm going to do mine here. I'll take some measurements in a minute. Just using this pink chalk just to mark it. We have a curved edge at the bottom and then down. Let me get the piece of paper and I'll show you what I'm drawing. So we've got the waistband of our trousers here and we've got the centre seam there that then goes off to the trouser legs each. And what I'm doing is I'm drawing a line down here from the waistband before I folded it over and then I'm going to curve it like that to the end. Hopefully that makes sense and you can see that. So that's going to be the waistband here, which we've not sewn yet, so don't worry. But I want this uh, this stitching to go through the waistband here and then across like that. And I think I'm going to put a little button just here on mine. 
as well so it just sees that so that's the two legs side of the sides of the boxes and that's the shape that we want to be drawing onto our fabric I want it to be quite deliberate, so maybe to there. Okay. Right, I think I'm happy with that. So let me measure this for you, and then you'll know. So from the centre seam, I have gone in three quarters of a centimetre. And then from the waistband down, oh, sorry, um, noises. My, I've gone down six centimetres. So six centimetres to the curvy bit from the waistband. Un unsewn waistband and then that's just three quarters of a centimetre in from the sewn edge and what I'm going to do is just do a straight stitch down there and across and I'm hoping you're going to be able to see it which would be nice so if I turn my, my um, boxer shorts inside out that's going to give that little uh, mock fly opening trousers out of the way and hold them flat because we only want to be going through one one side so put my needle down into the work take that pin out because that was just telling me which side I needed to do it so hold those flat and I'm just going to sew nice and straight then when I get to here I'm going to just start and curve it one almost one stitch at a time two stitches isn't it but depends on your foot control and then that's just going to hold that seam allowance then backwards and forwards on that seam allowance okay. oh, just got our little mock fly opening there you could do it in a contrast thread if you wanted to I just think I just wanted mine to be in the white. The other thing you could do is do it in a slightly... I'll just get that rid of that chalk. And it will come out when we wash the, wash the trousers anyway. But there we've got, starting here, that curved edge and going up. Quite a nice little cute little detail. So then the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to fold over the top the first little quarter of an inch and then we're going to fold it over the centimetre. We want them to fit in the hem to go in and under the centre seam. There, I'm going to open out as I'm so as I'm pressing this over. And again, because we've got our pressed seam there already, that's working to help us. I'm going to do it too much there, maybe. That's better. There we go. The band has got a little bit of a curve on it, that's why my um, the waistband, because we're just turning over, has got a little bit of a curve on it, so it's higher at the back. So you, your stripes might not match on the inside, but don't worry about that, because that's because of the curve that you're working with, so that it fits and goes higher at the back for when Alf is wearing his new boxer shorts. sure that seam is going under. We're going to have to be right on the very edge of here to make sure that we pick up that edge that's been tucked under because it's very narrow. Okay, so I'm going to start at the back seam again. There's our little, see the little bit of the pink chalk. That should, that should come off. So now I'm going to start at the back, centre back, but what I'm going to do is go either side of the seam allowance because we need enough room to be able to poke a, um, a safety pin in with the elastic on. So I'm going to start just past there, which then helps us not have to sew over this bit just here just yet. 
and then that will just help us then take that waistband all the way round. So let's line this up right on the edge with our stitches. I'm going to take that needle, that pin out because that's going to be in the way. That's it. I hold on to my threads, put my needle in my work. So a couple of stitches forward, a couple back, and then right on the folded edge. I'm not leaving much margin at all. So just take your time. If you have to use your speed control and reduce it down, so literally you just one or two stitches at a time, then do that. Going zoomy is not your friend on when you're trying to do something like this. And just use your pin to fold it under if you need to. We don't want any raw edges poking out. We're going to sew straight over the front where the seam allowance is. And just roll the trousers towards you again, the boxes towards you again as you're sewing. So you could make swimming trunks, couldn't you, the same way if you wanted to. Just use the same pattern. If you're making some holiday shorts, you could use the same pattern as well. If you wanted to put a waistband on, then you can do. If you don't feel they're deep enough, you know, the crotch length isn't deep, deep enough for your character. Remember to leave your gap, but to reinforce at the start and the stop because you just need to, you're going to put some pressure on that, that seam opening with your elastic, so you do need to have that reinforcement just to hold on to it. So that's what we've got at the moment, we've got our little box of shorts, oh, little thread there. So now what I need is some elastic, so just hold on one second. So the elastic measurement I'm going to use is, I've just got this little thin elastic that will just fit in, in the waistband there. This is, let's just have a look and see so I can tell you, it's five mils wide, that is, five or six mils wide. And then I'm going to cut off nine inches because that's how much we cut off for the, what did we do recently? Oh, for the, um, that was it, for the pyjamas, I did the pyjamas video recently, didn't I? So nine inches was just perfect. Just mark it with my finger and then just snip it off. Elastic to one side. Take measure away. Whoops. And then get a little safety pin. So I'm going to use a little gold safety pin for this because I think this seam, this um, waistband is really quite narrow. So we've got a little safety pin like this one. That's really good. Little gold one. And what we need to remember is not to lose the other end of the elastic in the shorts because otherwise we have to start again so we just and these these little gold potato pins don't take much hammer so when we when we start put, threading this in so we're just going to poke it in through there and make sure it all goes in and around the corner and then we push on the pin to push it forward through the channel and the fabric bunches up and then we just pull on the back and it'll pull the elastic through as it goes so pull forward and then you can just see it just so you pull all the fabric with your fingers over the top of the elastic. If you've never done this before, I suppose it's quite a different thing to be doing, but this is how we thread the elastic. So we've put the safety pin through and you can feel the safety pin, the hardness of the safety pin. So you can use one hand to push the safety pin forward and that hand kind of scrunches the fabric onto it. Then when you've got a few gathers like that, if you just hold onto the back of your garment and pull, those gathers spread out and it pulls the elastic in with it. Now, while we're here, let's just take a, a pin and just pin our, the end of our elastic onto our garment because you'll be surprised how many times you'll start and then you'll by accident pull the elastic through and it's really annoying when you've got to start again. So again, let's scrunch that fabric up and pull it on. Just take it steady with these gold safety pins because, as I say, they're, they're not as strong as the, the bigger silver ones and they sometimes can open up in the channel we're nice and gentle hopefully we'll be okay the other thing to be careful of is when you get to your seam allowance at the front here because that's going to want to stop your pin from going through 
So you just have to try and find your way through the elastic, not through the elastic, through the seam allowance. Sometimes you just need to have a little hold just for it to, oh there it is, it's gone through now. It goes a little bit tighter just there, so just take your time. Keep the pressure on the back of the back of the safety pin. Come on. You know you want to go through. Oops, I can hear that's just opened up. So just close that up. just nice and gently just because we've gone narrower at that point there it will at some stage get the elastic through just because the elastic's thick but you give it a wiggle there we go I think my pin has opened up again so Working blindly, we're just going to try and get that to recapture on. So you can't push it through if the, if the pin is in, because every time you try and move the pin forward, it catches on the point. So doing this in real time as well, just to show you how much it takes, because it does just take a few minutes. I don't think it gets done super, super quick. It is worth it, though. Cute little pair of boxer shorts could be together though. I wonder how they're gonna fit. That's what I'm curious to see now, or whether I need to have to start all over again and refilm with a bit of a slight modification to the pattern, but we'll see. Let's see how we get on. So again, we've just got to pull the elastic now through the hole. And you can see that with that holding it onto the garment does help you then with this. Next thing that we need to do is we're going to undo the pin there when there's no pressure on the elastic and hold on to the end so it doesn't ping in. And then we're going to pull on this end of the elastic here and just pin those two together without letting go of our elastic. That's the challenging bit. Because then we're going to check that there's no twists in the elastic. And we do that just by running our fingers along, using those gathers around. And I can feel, you'd feel it if there was a crossover and just, just, just manipulate your elastic if there is, just so that it's straight. Because when we sew these together, we want these to be, to be straight. Once you're happy that that's all straight, then just pull on the end of your elastic like that to give you something to work with. And I sew my elastic, and then we just, I'm getting ahead of myself. Just put that. Just lay those two on on top there, so that when they go inside the two ends of the elastic, so that when they go inside, they're going to lie flat. Put your pin in just to hold it together, like that. And I sew my elastic together by hand. If I can see my needles, yes, they're here. Because by the time you've tried to manipulate the elastic underneath the presser foot. It does create, oh, that's not, a, that's not what I wanted. That's a pin that's gone in my hoover and not kept its top. So there we go, it's just, just got the thread double, let's do a knot. And then we're just going to now just do a couple of over stitches over these ends of the elastic like this. This is a lovely quick pattern, whether you're making the French knickers, which I'll do a video for, because working with lace is slightly different, isn't it? So I will do a um, video for the French knickers separately to this one, but I just thought this was just too cute an idea not to share with you. So just go across to the other side of the elastic. We'll just do a few stitch over stitches there, just holding these two bits of elastic together. And I've only overlapped it by a centimetre, I think, really. That should give you more than enough good elastic to work with. 
just a few more stitches. It doesn't have to be too neat on that bit because not nobody's going to see it. Just keep your threads. And then when we pull on the elastic on the side, you'll see the elastic then just pops into the into the hole and it might need just a little bit of pushing in where the join is. Like that. And then what I try and do is I try and move that join of the elastic away from that back seam if I can, just by manipulating the fabric. Because the last thing that I want to do is just do a few stitches here just to close up this gap. So if you spread it so that the elastic gathers are all around the rest of the trousers, you can then just get in to finish off this seam just nicely here. So again, just hold it flat with your fingers, line up your needle. just sealed that up obviously if you need to leave it open until you've tried it on your character then do but I know that I used the nine inches the other day because it depends on how much you stuff your characters as to how much you need and then what I've got somewhere in a second got some little buttons little shirt buttons work really well for this as well oh there's a nice little blue one I'll, just, I'll save that for I've got those for eyes, so I'm going to save those for eyes and use one of these instead. So I've got a blue little triangle that can do for a little button on his front of his boxes to show him which is front and which is back. And that's just going to go on the front there. So, or you can use an old shirt button. I mean, that one, those ones would look nice, wouldn't they? Those little ones just there. Or maybe I ought to use that. I have got two sets of those for, oh no, I've got an odd number. Oh, we're in luck. I've got an odd number. Hold on one second. So it's a little blue button here. And you can get the little miniature buttons from Cool Crafting, can't you, on their website. So that on top there, I think, would just look really sweet. So let's do that. Let me find, I've got my needle and thread just here. First thing I just need to make sure is that this needle, because it's quite thick, will fit through the buttonhole. Yes, it will. Just put a little needle at the little hole. And then I'm just going to do a little stitch. So in the centre of the, of the fly, mock fly front, just take a little stitch to hide that knot underneath. Just trim my ends. And I always just take another little stitch just to anchor that knot in place. I want these to be fixed on nice and neatly. Oop. Needle doesn't want to go through. And then I'll then thread my button without trying to position it in and out. And then once it's safely on the need on the thread, then we can move it forward into position. And then I'm going. I am going to go through the elastic as well at this point. Take it nice and steady just to get through the holes. There we go. I'm just going to make sure it's neat on the back. I'm just going to go through the button just a few times just to secure that little button on the front. I think it's just a nice little touch. Obviously, you can do more buttons if you want down the front. But one I think will be enough for now. And these are a little choke hazard, aren't they? Just for little ones. So if you're if you're um Luna is a gift for a, you know, for a small child. I know that they say not under three, don't they, for the, for Luna with her fastenings. Just bear that in mind. You might want to omit the button if it's for a smaller, younger child. One more, I think, and then that's nice and securely sewn on. And then I'm going to grab my Luna character and try them on. Just going to do a couple of stitches on the back there just to anchor that thread down. And then if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I like to leave a nice long tail. So I'm just going to thread, close to where my stitches are, thread my needle in the back of the 
trousers and put it along through the waistband so you can't see it front or back and then I pull it through put a little bit of tension on the thread and then when you snip it off that means that that thread then pulls through into your trousers and it, it just gives it a nice long edge to not undo, undo. so there we go there's our little box of shorts let's try these on and see how they look and so we have an Alfie Luna just modeling his very swish new box of shorts with a little hole for his tail maybe with hindsight that could have done with being a little bit bigger so just go a little bit maybe a half a centimeter or a centimeter taller especially depending on the size of the little tail if you do want it to poke through um, just leave the little, just start it, don't go down quite so far. But I really like those. I know they look quite full, but when, when he actually sits down, he does need some of that fullness just for his legs to come forward and sit nicely. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could along that side seam just fold out a little bit of the pattern just by creating a tuck in the pattern there to take out some of that fullness. But I think they look great. I've got the little mock fly stitching down the front there, look. And the little button just to mark the front. So there we go, folks. I hope you've enjoyed making these. Great weekend project. Um, and as I say, it'll send you hunting for striped shirts in, in wardrobes to see what you've got. And if you did want to have a hand with how to cut up a shirt to recycle it, then there's a video I can pop up here that will just show you how to do that. So um, I did that one before because it's one of my husband's old shirts. But yeah boxer shorts there we go have a great weekend everybody and happy stitching and if you've liked what i've done then please consider subscribing to the channel i really do appreciate your support for my little channel um and um hopefully you'll stick around click the notifications bell and then when i load new videos like this one or some of the other ones that i've got planned then you'll get you'll be one of the first ones to know and you'll get a notification have a great day everybody bye